everyone. Today we are going to be talking about Claris FileMaker's new transactional script steps. First thing we should probably start off with is what are transactions? So a transaction is just fancy talk for being able to undo. So if you have a script where you are setting fields, going to new or needing to set fields and multiple tables, create new records, whatever it is, and you need to be able to essentially at some point if an error happens revert your changes and go back, that is transaction script. Uh, if everything goes great, then you just commit great. So the way that we had to do it in the past, we had to use relationships and global fields and then sometimes objects on layouts in order to do all those things because FileMaker natively wanted to save if you did things like go to layout or go to new record. So the new script sets that FileMaker has, if we were to look at one of these scripts is open transaction, revert transaction, and commit transaction. So the open transaction, is, as far as settings wise, is pretty similar to the commit record step where you can tell it that when it does commit to skip data entry uh, validation and also to override any ESS locking content, just like the commit script. Uh, difference here is that you can see it kind of looks like the a loop or an if where it indents everything in. Essentially what's happening here is everything within here is now part of the transaction. So FileMaker is going to ignore its normal tendencies to want to save or, or commit any changes when you go to a layout or do one of those things that FileMaker normally commit. We're essentially holding that back and saying FileMaker do not commit during this section. Um, then you have the revert transaction scripts up, which says that you know, given a given condition, so in this case we're saying, hey, if the get found set doesn't equal one or something, um, any condition that you can specify in a normal FileMaker calculation, if it's true, then that means FileMaker is going to revert. And when it reverts, it's going to skip the rest of the script step, it reverts all the changes, and takes you directly to the commit transaction script step, uh, basically just taking you out of this block. The other options that it has here is an error code and an error message. The error code is essentially a custom code that you can provide as long as, as, long as it is between 5,000 and 5,499. So that's just the range of numbers that FileMaker provides us to give our own little custom code. Uh, you can give it, you know, again, any of those numbers, anything within that range. And then the message, again, is a specific custom message that you want to provide and give to it. So if you don't have error capture turned on, then uh, the, the error message after you, after the commit script, transaction script step, it pops up a FileMaker error dialog where it has the code and then it also has your message. If you have error capture turned on, then in a single script step, you need to capture, if you want to capture them both, you need to capture them in one line. That's, you can get the error by using the normal FileMaker get last error. And then to get the custom message, you use Last error detail. Um, I believe this was just converted from uh, a rename of what FileMaker's other function was the last external error detail, I think it was along those, along those lines. Um, so that, that was renamed. So this now will grab that message and be able to provide. The reason you need to do it in one line is because if this was a second line after this set variable, the error code and error message go away from the script. So you have to grab it in one. So like I said, after the revert transaction, it just immediately takes you, skips the rest of it and takes you down to here. Um, but if there, if there wasn't, if, if the condition here was false, as in there's no reason to revert, it would keep going down, same thing, keep going down. If everything was good, it would get to commit and that's when it actually commits and saves your change. Uh, the commit transaction scripts up, there's nothing to set, there's no setting for it, it's just the end of the transaction. Uh, one thing to note here, is that all three of these script steps, um, they all need to be within the same script. So you can't have a subscript that ends a commit transaction or a subscript that has the revert transaction script step in it. Uh, all three of them have to be within the same script. So if I were, were to try to remove this or whatever like that, it's just like a if or an end, or an end loop or something like that. It, it needs that in order to close that block. The you can still have performed script steps inside of here. So you can still have 
subscripts that do other tests, um, but it can't have those three, these three scripts up here within it. And you can't have a transaction within a transaction. Um, there is a new get function uh, that is get transaction open state, which will be true or false if you are within an open tra transaction block or not. Most likely going to be useful uh, in a subscript because in a main script itself, you kind of know if you are or not. <laughs> but in a subscript, you you may have some modularity there, and uh, that function will let you know if you're inside of a programmatically let you know if you're inside of a transaction. Um, the couple things to note here is that when you are inside of a transaction, uh, if you if you did transactions the old way using relationships and everything. You might be familiar with this, but FileMaker, as you're making changes, it's making this, it's keeping those changes in the TO itself and not in the table. So basically, what that means is if you had an invoice table and you had another, so it had an invoice TO and another invoice to TO. Uh, if you go to a layout based on invoice, make changes, and then go to an invoice, or another layout that's based on invoice to TO, uh, those changes, you won't see them there. Because FileMaker is keeping track of those changes in the TO. Uh, another thing to note that there's some things you just will have to uh, kind of test and see how it works. One thing I noticed is that if you delete a record and then do a find for that record, it still exists. <laughs> so, um, But when you commit it, it will actually delete it. So uh, you'll just have to make sure that in your scripting, you have the right order of operations that you want to do things in. Um, you know, don't try to change things and then go find records based on those changes. Just make sure your scripting makes the changes and then just, you know, you keep tracking variables or whatever of the changes that were made um, as you're moving on. Uh, another thing I'd like to note is that uh, this open transaction is doing everything through scripting. So if you have any processes that are longer, that have a lot of records where you're, you're like thousands of records that you're trying to change, where there's you know a lot of little updates or a lot of fields that you're setting to. Uh, there's a chance you still may want to use the relationship method versus using open transaction script steps, just because uh, using the data layer, it's data layer is faster versus going into find mode and going to layout and doing a whole bunch of finds and things like that. It does run a little bit faster using the relationship method versus just open transactions purely, uh, but any any methods using the you know the relationship methods, even if they're within an open transaction, uh, those will still work. So the open transaction doesn't mess with how we had to do things before open transaction. One other thing I'd like to mention is making sure that you enter find mode before going to the layout versus going to the layout then enter find mode. Uh, it seems small, but it could be a pretty big difference because this will make sure that you are in find mode and then you're only loading the record that you're looking to find versus if you go to layout first, you could be loading the record that you don't really care and that could take some time. You could even have a summary field on that layout that you know you could be summarizing unnecessarily. So uh, it's always a best practice to enter find mode and then go to layout. But uh, in conclusion, the open transaction script steps are a great add. Uh, it's going to help provide us with uh, a lot easier way to explain to people how to do transactions. So it almost gives no excuses to not do transactional scripting now, because uh, it's just a lot more intuitive, easy to read. Um, it will completely reduce the number of TOs and layout objects, and maybe even layouts uh, that a system has, which then will reduce the size of the relationship graph and the database itself. So all these things will really make it so that the as developers can develop a lot faster and just make better code in general. So. Uh, we look forward to hearing how everyone is using these new transaction script steps. Uh, if you need any help, help, please feel free to contact us. Thanks.